Hello everyone! Are you aware that, on average, one asteroid with a diameter of 4 meters falls to Earth every year? Now, what about larger rocks? What kind of damage can these meteorites cause to our planet? Welcome to our channel! With that introduction out of the way, let's take a closer look. So, let's get started. The Silacuga Meteorite Meteorites are the smallest celestial bodies that can fall to Earth and be visible. Approximately 44 tons of meteoric material fall to Earth every day, but most of it evaporates in the atmosphere, creating beautiful shooting stars. Only about 500 meteors per year manage to reach the Earth's surface without burning up completely in the atmosphere. On November 30, 1954, one of these, the Silacuga meteorite, made its descent to Earth. This meteorite fragmented into at least three pieces before impact. One of the fragments, weighing 3.86 kilograms and about the size of a large orange, landed in the town of Silacuga, Alabama, piercing through the roof of a building and creating a hole 91 centimeters wide. Subsequently, the meteorite ricocheted off a radio and struck a woman named Ann Hodges, who was peacefully napping on her sofa at home. While the collision left a large bruise on her thigh, she was otherwise unharmed. Fragments of the meteorite that fell on the Silacuga residence, known as the Hodges meteorite, were later sold to the Alabama Museum of Natural History for a mere $25. While expensive for an orange, it's quite a bargain for such a special stone. Additionally, the second fragment of the Silacuga meteorite fell on the property of local farmer Mr. McKinney and was later sold to the Smithsonian Institution, with the proceeds reportedly allowing him to purchase a house and a car. Quite a difference in negotiating skills, isn't it? Meteor, 4 meters. Cases of 4-meter stones entering Earth's atmosphere from space occur approximately once a year. It's a frequency sufficient to cause concern, isn't it? What abilities do these celestial bodies possess then? The velocity of meteoric material upon entering the atmosphere exceeds 11 kilometers per second, or 39,600 kilometers per hour. Now, let's see what's happening. Even in the thin layers of the atmosphere, objects compress the air significantly as they move forward. If you extend your arm and swing it quickly, you'll feel air resistance against your palm. The same occurs with meteors. However, molecules and atoms ahead of the meteor are compressed tightly, causing overheating and explosion. A similar process occurs in four-stroke internal combustion engines. When the piston compresses the fuel and oxygen mixture in the cylinder, or in diesel engines when only air is compressed, at maximum compression, the gas in the combustion chamber ignites, causing the piston to move backward and transferring this energy to the crankshaft. Similarly, meteors experience strong ram pressure. Unlike pistons, meteors cannot reverse, so they release thermal energy and instantly disintegrate. Our protagonist, the 4-meter meteor, enters the atmosphere at a 45-degree angle. The energy before entry equates to 1.3 kilotons in TNT equivalents. Meteors typically explode at an altitude of 39.6 kilometers, with energy equivalent to 0.38 kilotons. Fragments scatter at a speed of 9 kilometers per second, but they rarely reach the ground. The sound heard from a distance of 10 kilometers feels as gentle as the rustling of leaves. Usually, 4-meter meteors fall unnoticed, but sometimes they emit bright flames, turning night into day. In January 2000, a fireball weighing 56 tons with a diameter of 4 meters exploded over Lake Tagish in Canada, scattering small fragments on the ground. A total of 750 grams of material was recovered, and analysis confirmed the presence of organic compounds, including amino acids and nano-diamonds. 
One could say they're the best friends of nano girls, couldn't they? Asteroid, 20 meters. When a 20 meter asteroid enters the atmosphere at a speed of 17 kilometers per second, it carries with it an energy equivalent to 376 kilotons. Asteroids with these parameters travel farther than 4-meter meteors and explode at an altitude of 22 kilometers. The energy released by the explosion is estimated to be 230 kilotons in TNT equivalents. At the impact site, glass shatters, and the explosion sound rivals the noise of a busy highway. However, this scenario is for asteroids entering the atmosphere at a 45-degree angle. On February 15, 2013, success was achieved in capturing a bright fireball entering the atmosphere over the city of Chelyabinsk, Russia, at an altitude of 23 kilometers with a very acute angle. This celestial body was estimated to have a diameter of 18 to 20 meters, a weight of 11,000 tons, and an energy release of approximately 500 kilotons. A large number of fragments rained down on the ground, with the largest exceeding 570 kilograms in weight. The shockwave traveled around the Earth twice and, being too powerful, triggered an earthquake of magnitude 4. There were about 7,000 incidents of damage in Chelyabinsk, mainly consisting of broken glass in buildings, but some structures suffered damage to roofs, walls, and beams due to the shockwave. Asteroid 370 meters. On June 19, 2004, Roy Tucker, David Tholen, and Fabrizio Bernardi of the Kitt Peak National Observatory discovered a slender asteroid designated 99942 with dimensions of 450 times 170 meters and a weight of 61 million tons at a distance of 14.4 million kilometers from Earth. This asteroid was named Apophis, after the ancient Egyptian mythological serpent Apophis, which sought to destroy the setting sun, symbolizing chaos and destruction. More precisely, the name is derived not from the serpent itself, but from the antagonist in the science fiction television series Stargate, which scientists were fans of. It's a highly ominous name, hinting at the potential harm this serpent could cause to Earth. Indeed, a rock longer than the Empire State Building could bring significant catastrophe if it were to fall to Earth. For example, a similar asteroid with a diameter of 325 meters would collide with Earth at an angle of 45 degrees with an energy of 1,710 megatons. At the impact site, a crater with a diameter of 5.3 kilometers and a depth of 488 meters would remain. From a distance of 10 kilometers from the impact site, a mushroom cloud 88 times the size of the sun would be visible. Trees at this distance would be engulfed in flames instantly due to thermal radiation. Several seconds after impact, an earthquake of magnitude 6.8 would occur. Structures that didn't collapse immediately would likely fall due to the shock wave. Within a radius of 10 kilometers, 90% of tall buildings, bridges, and trees would collapse. Destruction would extend over an area of 1,000 square kilometers, but it wouldn't threaten humanity with a nuclear winter. That's a relief, isn't it? Asteroid 10 Kilometers When a 10-kilometer asteroid collides with Earth at a 45-degree angle, it leaves behind a crater with a diameter of 110 kilometers and a depth of 22 kilometers. Imagine the size of that hole. The power of such asteroids upon impact is immense. Some may be concerned about such occurrences, so just to clarify, after the collision, the tilt of the Earth's axis changes by only 0.05 degrees and the length of the day changes by only 1.5 milliseconds. However, all other conditions deteriorate drastically. An earthquake of magnitude 9.8 shakes the Earth. An explosion with an energy release of 54 million megatons poses a serious problem. Nevertheless, if you want to understand the impact, just consider the dinosaurs. According to the prevailing theory, it was precisely such rocks that brought about the end of the dinosaur era. 
The result of such a collision is the Chicxulub Crater with a diameter of 180 kilometers. A tsunami 100 meters high swept across the sea. Fires broke out everywhere and volcanoes erupted like squeezing a tube of toothpaste. Dust covered the sky, lingering in the atmosphere for years. Something akin to a nuclear winter began and ultimately, while some survived, they were not dinosaurs. Dwarf Planet, 450 kilometers. Let's indulge in some purely hypothetical speculation. Imagine a dwarf planet like Ceres deviating from its orbit and heading towards Earth. A celestial body with a diameter of 450 kilometers hurtles towards Earth with an energy release of 5 trillion megatons. Upon impact, it would create a crater with a diameter of 1,240 kilometers and a depth of 440 kilometers. The size of the crater would rival that of Saudi Arabia, and its depth would be equivalent to 55 Mount Everests stacked. You see where this is going, right? It's the end of the story. I'm not joking, I'm serious. Actually, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could generously click the like button. Also, please share this video with your friends so that more people can learn about the fascinating and simultaneously perilous aspects of the universe. Don't worry about the rest. The worst-case scenarios involving asteroids don't pose a threat to Earth. In the future on this channel, I hope to entertain you with many more interesting topics. Well then, it's time to say goodbye for a while. Everyone, I'll see you again soon. Goodbye!